Okay, everybody, this video originally started out as just an instruction on how to change your fuel pump on a Briggs & Stratton Vanguard mower. Once it wouldn't work, I actually bit the bullet and took the mower into a service shop and they basically said they couldn't get any compression on one of the cylinders and they thought it was knackered and would, did they want me to scrap the mower. So I said, no, don't worry about it, I'll bring it home and I'll try and just swap the engine out for a new engine. So um, I should have really started recording this when I took the engine off, but here it is sat here. Um, it's a 2004 Steger Park Pro, it's got a 16 horsepower Briggs & Stratton Vanguard engine on it. Um, as you can see, I've removed it from the chassis, etc. now. Um, took the top cover off initially, fuel pump, airbox, carb inlets manifold for the the cylinders um bit of a nightmare to get some of the mounting screws for the engine especially this one here as you can see it's still in because it's sat right above the tough torque gearbox so that was a bit of a nightmare but she's all off now sat up on my little makeshift stand i've drained it all down um and i'm going to attempt i've got no real proper knowledge of working on engines but I'm going to attempt to take the sump off the bottom and have a look at what's gone wrong inside and possibly try and fix it myself if it's not going to cost too much in parts but if it's going to be a nightmare I'm just going to look for a second hand engine on eBay and I'm going to transplant it so I can get this old girl back to mowing so I don't have to keep on borrowing a mower so I'll set up a tripod I'll try and record as much as I can and you can follow me on my journey. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is take off the cylinder heads just to reduce the weight a bit before I flip it to take the sump off. Um, these covers are held on by two 10mm bolts and then the heads themselves are 12mm bolts. So I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and take these off, pull these out and I'll take the the cylinder heads off and uh, hopefully we'll flip it over. Okay, so I've taken the cover off the top here, the two, two 10mm bolts. The gasket has actually split on it, so I'll be getting a razor blade just to take off this one off this face. There's 10mm bolts hold the, the rockers on, and then it's 12mm bolts for those two, and then another two in here. Obviously, I've got to take these two off to get at the inside. I've already loosened the two 12 mils on this side. I'm just going to take off these two 10 mils, get this out, take those off, take the whole cover off. Depending on what I find when I get inside this, if I deem it too big a job for me or it's going to be too expensive in parts, this engine's just going to be scrapped. But if it looks feasible, I'm going to buy a whole new kit regarding gaskets, etc. So there'll be all new gaskets for every face head gasket and all sorts so um yeah we'll see how we go okay so i've had a go at trying to record with it on a tripod it's a bloody nightmare to tell you the truth because i'm back and forth to the engine trying to touch my start button for the the phone so um yeah i'll just show you what i've done at the minute now um i've just taken off the two um bolts which hold this part of the exhaust manifold to it the two six millimeter socket head screws so that's now free from it i've taken off the two 12 mil bolts that hold this part all to do with the governor on it the two 10 mils that which we're holding in the top of the rockers are out these are now loose these are now loose these are 12 mils so this in theory should all lift off so we'll have a go now here she comes That's all off. Let me set that down on the floor. Let's have a look at the inside here. Ooh, it's looking a bit crappy. It's dirty in there. So that one's not too bad. So I'd say possibly that's not the problem. Let's get going on the other side. Okay, so I got the two cylinder heads off now and it is not looking too good for this engine. Uh, machine shop suggested that they thought that one one of the cranks had definitely gone 
but they said uh, possibly the second had and I'm manually spinning it and nothing's going so I've got a feeling that inside the age of the engine a bit of wear and tear has taken its toll and basically has exploded um, I don't think this is salvageable but we'll take the bottom off we'll have a look at the damage inside and say this was just an exercise for me to break down an engine really probably as opposed to actually fixing it because I say my my knowledge is limited but I got a feeling that once I drop the sump off that, flip it up, it's going to look a mess inside. So I think I'm going to be searching eBay for a second hand engine to transplant to my old girl. But we'll have a look. Okay, so when I turned this upside down, I heard some jingling inside. So that's not a good sign. I've just managed to get the pulley off the bottom, taking the, the little key piece out as well. All of the bolts. I've undone, apart from these, these two in the middle, these two I believe hold the oil pump. So everything around the outside's uh, undone. I've given it a couple of taps and tried to work it with a hammer. So, um, keep on going here now. Okay, so I've got the sump off, even though basically all of them, all of the bolts were loose, possibly on one on each side, there was the, just the slightest bit of a thread was still in. So once I physically pulled them all out, it popped off nicely off the shaft and it is a mess in here. Yeah, catastrophic failure. Um, yes, let me dig everything out. Look at the state of it. See if they score, if anything scored on the inside. Hopefully, nothing scored on the inside. If it's just a case of the, I don't know what the proper, the connector arms or rods, whatever. If that's all that's gone, hopefully, I can possibly do something with it, depending on price. But we'll have a look. Okay, everybody. It's been a few weeks since I last come and looked at this, but I've been working. But I'm on my days off, so let's have another look at it. Um, what can I tell you? In the process of taking the flywheel off so I can actually get the crank out, it's a 30mm nut that goes onto the end here. Um, once I get it free, I've actually got to get it past these, I believe, I can't remember what these are, they're all part of the starting system. But there's two 7mm bolts actually hold them in on these two posts on the equivalent one here. So they're going to come off in order for me to be able to take the flywheel out. Crankshaft will be able to come out then. I know from, you can't really see in there, but I know from looking inside and feeling it, it's good. Um, so that's good. Only problem is camshaft. I thought that I was good here and I've had a closer look at it. And I don't know if you can see there, that's the start of a hairline crack. And it goes all, well, it goes half the way around the, the cam. So uh, I've just ordered a new one of those. That is all of the crap that came out of the engine. Obviously, the sleeves on the pistons were knackered, the con rods were knackered. It's just an absolute mess. So, uh, I've ordered different bits and bobs in. I've literally just ordered one of these because I've just realised that there was the crack. So, it's coming in second hand from America. Cost me about 50 quid, including the shipping. All of this... Oh, let's put that back there so it doesn't fall off the bench. All of this I've managed to get in from America again. Um, I'll, I'll list where I've got different bits from in the next video, um, which I'd imagine is going to be a good month away by the time we've got, got everything in. Um, but I've bought these bits in. It's got the two pistons, the piston rings. It's got all of the, the gaskets, the seals, everything for this kit. It cost me about 235 and then Amazon US, I actually got the uh, replacement con rods. They were the cheapest that I could find. So when it all comes in, I'll be about 330 quid in the hole 
in parts and then it's just going to be my time and when you look at what second hand engine prices are in the UK even just on eBay you're looking about 450 quid for the equivalent model and those engines are older than this one and obviously you don't know the history of it so at least I'll have all of the parts everything effectively is going to be new in there so it should give it a good lease of life so it's just a case of me um, let's say finishing breaking it down giving it a good clean up get everything in and uh, start to put it back together so yeah that's where we are at the moment everything's broken down that's the two different bits for the cylinders there's everything else on the top so I've taken photos all the way through. I've managed to find the manuals online, which I've printed off. So uh, anything that I've got with regards to manuals, parts, etc., prices, I'll try and make a list and I'll put that in the next video if that'll be useful to anybody. But uh, yeah, join me on the next one. Hopefully this will be clean and I'll be starting to reassemble. Catch you next time. Just a quick little one. I've just managed to get the flywheel off. Obviously, make sure that you don't lose that, whatever it's called, the key or whatever, because obviously there's a little channel just in here where it all makes it sit. But look at the crap that's inside there. So i just got to make sure that this is all cleaned out because that will obviously aid starting. Something to do with that and something to do with that. I'm not technical, but that all makes it starting easier and just give it a good clean. There's a little seal there. That's another one of those that's in this kit that's come from America. So uh, she's being pulled out. And I'll start to clean it down. Catch you next time.